June has been in the bag for a couple of weeks now, so it's way past time for a new pickups video on the channel, and this month is one of the better months that I've had for pickups. So, let's get into my video game pickups for the month of June 2020. So let's actually kick things off with some thrift store pickups in the month of June. I spent one day, actually one and a half days, going to a couple of different thrift stores in the local area, and I got a couple of decent things. Let's see, first thing we got here is I got Sega Casino on the Nintendo DS. Got it for like two bucks or something like that, so why not? And then I got these for two bucks too. I got the Garfield Show on the Nintendo Wii. And then I got Carnival Games on the Nintendo Wii. Now this Garfield game, probably not going to be a very good game, but I do like Garfield. And, you know, it doesn't look half bad on the back. And looked up reviews for it. It got somewhat average reviews. And then at another thrift store, I didn't find any games, but I did find a couple of really cool Sonic comics. So we got a Sonic Universe comic. And then we've got a Sonic the Hedgehog comic. So I don't really collect comics, but... If I see a video game comic somewhere, I'm probably going to snatch it up. So I probably will collect at least video game themed comics or comics based on video games, that sort of thing. And that wasn't all I found at the thrift stores. I've actually started collecting VHS tapes as well. And I'm not, I'm not collecting everything. I'm basically just collecting the movies that I enjoyed when I was a kid. So I did pick up some movies at the thrift store as well. And I'll be honest, I didn't feel like digging those out because kind of lazy today. But I will show you a picture at least so that you can see the VHS tapes that I picked up. So I picked up 007 Tomorrow Never Dies, 007 Goldeneye, The Brave Little Toaster, Rugrats A Rugrats Vacation, Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade, Platoon, National Lampoon's Vacation, The Edge, The Mask, and The Santa Claus. So some pretty decent VHS tapes picked up on that thrift store run. Now, Next, we've got some uh, some miscellaneous stuff that I got from the game store. So I've started collecting for the Game Boy again. So I got some Game Boy games and some Game Boy Color games here. And uh, this, this whole stack here, as I'm calling them off, I'll let you see them in a picture on the screen. So I don't have to hold each game up to the camera individually. But we have Tony Hawk Pro Skater 2, Super Mario Bros. Deluxe, NASCAR Heat, Yu-Gi-Oh! Dark Duel Story, Hoyle Casino, Dracula, Mega Man 4, Wario Land, Super Mario Land 3, Lock and Chase, Kicks, Hyper Load Runner, and Alleyway. And in addition to those Game Boy games, I also picked up a Xbox, an only on Xbox, OG Xbox game. I'm not going for a complete Xbox collection. I'm basically just trying to collect the games that were exclusive to the OG Xbox. So I picked up Kingdom Under Fire Heroes, which I've heard is not a very good game. Next up, we've got some Instagram pickups from my brother Carl, AKA the Retro Gaming Zone. And I'm gonna leave all the Instagram profile names in the description down below. I highly encourage you to go follow these folks. But Carl hooked me up with some more Game Boy games to increase my collection. He hooked me up with Disney's The Little Mermaid, The Rugrats Movie, Championship Pool, Miss Pac-Man, The Jungle Book, and Donkey Kong. So shout out to Carl for hooking me up with some of those Game Boy games. In addition to that, my good friend Scott Kinney aka Kid Cosmic on Instagram, and he was also one of the producers for the Game Chasers movie and Mark Hamill's Pop Culture Quest. I did a podcast with him that you might find interesting. I'll leave a link to that in the description down below. But he hooked me up with, for the Game Gear, Complete in Box, Asterix, and The Great Rescue, and I thought that was pretty cool. Um, because I do collect Game Gear games, not really Complete in Box, but it's really cool to have at least one Game Gear game complete in box. Next up for my good friend Gabe, aka HG underscore Boxing 89. He hooked me up with Mortal Kombat 2 on the Game Boy. And he also hooked me up with Bob on the Sega Genesis complete in box, B-O-B. And uh, this is actually a pretty fun game. Next up from Retro Sniper on Instagram. He hooked me up with a player's choice copy of Mortal Kombat Deadly Alliance. Even though I do have a complete North American Black Label set on the Nintendo GameCube, I'm also going for a complete player's choice set as well, and this is one that I needed, so shout out to him for that. But he also hooked me up with sort of a holy grail item for the GameCube, and that is the Resident Evil 4 Edition GameCube that was exclusive to Europe, exclusive to the PAL territory, and I love the design on this console because it has the black bottom, 
and the platinum or silver top and then it has resident evil 4 on the top of it and what's cool about this now i can't play ntsc games north american games on this but i can play pal territory european games on this console which is really awesome because at some point i was going to start collecting the pal exclusive gamecube games and now i have a gamecube that i will actually be able to play those on and not only that huge fan of resident evil 4 as a lot of you know it's one of my favorite games of all time so having another resident evil 4 piece in the collection is awesome next up we've got some playstation 4 and nintendo switch pickups now uh, there was a sale on, on uh, Amazon, actually. It was on Amazon. They were doing a buy two, get one free sale. So I took advantage of that sale, and I got some pretty decent PlayStation 4 games. First off, we got Death Stranding. I have no idea when I'm going to be able to find the time to play this, but it's definitely on my backlog. And then we have Code Vein, which I've heard is sort of like a anime Dark Souls-ish game. And that sounds appealing to me because I do like some anime and I love Dark Souls. So if you combine the two together and it makes a good game, you definitely have my interest. And then we have Dreams on the PlayStation 4. And I actually played this some on stream. Absolutely insane. It's basically a game where people can make full games. And some of the stuff people have made in this thing is just downright hilarious. Especially the, uh, the Family Guy one that I played where you play as Peter and you go on an adventure. Insane. So Dreams is pretty cool. And then we also got some Nintendo Switch games in the month of June. Clubhouse Games 51 Worldwide Classics. Great value here because for $40 you get 51 games. High quality. I've been playing the hell out of this with my wife and we're having a blast. Uh, super fun package and it's got a lot of variety to how you can play the game. So I highly recommend picking that up. Then I also picked up SpongeBob SquarePants Battle for Bikini Bottom Rehydrated, which I recently did a video on, which I will leave a link to in the description down below. Such a hidden gem of a 3D platformer, and I was so happy to see THQ Nordic remake it. Then we also have The Outer Worlds on the Nintendo Switch. Did a video on this as well, talking about how it looks and runs on the Switch, how the port performs, looks, and runs. And I'll leave a link to that in the description down below. Really awesome game. Uh, then I got my Kickstarter-backed game, The Wonderful 101 Remastered. Still haven't played this, but I do love this cover. I don't know if you can tell on the camera there. It looks like you can. That it's kind of got that holographic cover, and it's a slip cover. So you got the normal game in there, too, so it's really cool. Then we got the Hotline Miami Collection, which includes both Hotline Miami and Hotline Miami 2. And I binge-played both of these games and beat them recently, which I'm going to talk about again in a future video such good games i could not follow the story at all but the gameplay is phenomenal so those are my playstation 4 and switch pickups for the month of june now let's get into a game lot and some flea market pickups a lot of the flea markets around me in my general area have opened back up so i decided you know what it's about time to get back out there and do some game hunting so i went for a flea market run spent half the day from freaking five o'clock in the morning to like three or four in the afternoon go in the flea markets. I went to four different flea markets and I got some pretty good stuff. Um, found quite a bit and I'll be honest with you, a lot of it was stuff I'm not gonna keep. Um, I am gonna show you what I'm gonna keep from the flea market, but a lot of it I'm not gonna keep. So it's kind of put up in a closet right now uh, because we're gonna sell a lot of it to try to recoup some of the money that we spent at the flea markets. And I'll be honest with you, I feel lazy today. I didn't feel like digging it out, but I do have pictures I'm going to throw up on the screen while I talk about everything. So let's get into what I found at the flea markets. So as you can see here, got a couple of GameCube games, Need for Speed Underground 2 Player's Choice, Need for Speed Hot Pursuit 2, and Mario Superstar Baseball, which I found for $3, by the way, and that is a fairly expensive GameCube game. And then I also got a complete and box copy of Monopoly on the NES. Got a copy of Luigi's Mansion on the 3DS, which I got for three bucks. Got a copy of WCW vs. NWO World Tour on the Nintendo 64. And then I found a boxed copy in a really good shape box of Super Mario Land on the Game Boy. I got it for 20 bucks, which is a pretty good price, and it's got the game in it, no manual. But I got a manual on eBay for four bucks, so I came out pretty good on that. Next up, we got some uh, DVD box sets there. Um, Firefly, the Super Mario Bros. Super Show, and He-Man's Masters of the Universe. Then I found a couple of Goosebumps books, which I'm trying to collect those as well. Got some 360 games and an Xbox game. We got Final Fantasy, what is that? Final Fantasy 13, Mortal Kombat vs. DC Universe, and Max Payne on the OG Xbox. Next up, we've got some PlayStation games, PlayStation 2, PlayStation 3, 
and PlayStation P UMD movie. We got Tomb Raider, Tomb Raider 3, Test Drive 5, Gran Turismo, Shadow of the Colossus, Grand Theft Auto 3, Guitar Hero 3 Legends of Rock, Final Fantasy X2, Killzone 2, Resident Evil 5, and Tim Burton's The Nightmare Before Christmas. And then I also got a stack of comics for 10 bucks, so less than a dollar per comic. And one of those comics, that Superman vs. Spider-Man comic, is worth about 40 to 60 bucks. So uh, yeah, came out pretty good there. And again, I don't really collect comics. I don't really know anything about comics, but for less than 10 bucks, that stack of comics looked promising. So I figured why the hell not, and it paid off. And then we got this little TV here. Now, this TV, it's actually a little monitor, a TV monitor, which tends to put out really good pictures for retro games. Now, unfortunately, the picture will not come on. I can plug a console up to it and I can hear it. I can get sound, but no picture, and that's a little bit bummed out. But I only paid five bucks for it. So for right now, it's in storage. At some point, I may try to have it repaired or even repair it myself. Also at the flea market, I got a stack of VHS tapes. We got Spider-Man, Judge Dredd, The Fifth Element, Dumb and Dumber, Jumanji, Space Jam, Encino Man, Street Fighter, Wayne's World, National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation, Scooby-Doo, Godzilla, and the special edition set of episode four, five, and six, Star Wars. So all in all, it was a really good flea market run. I was very pleased. Now here's the stuff that I decided to keep. I decided to keep the Nightmare Before Christmas PlayStation Portable UMD movie um, because I'm starting to collect those. Of course, I decided to keep Super Mario Land and I bought the manual for it, so now I have it complete in box, which is really nice. Did not have Luigi's Mansion on the 3DS, so I decided to keep that. Decided to keep Monopoly on the NES because honestly, even complete in box, it's not really worth that much. And I like Monopoly and the box is in good shape, so I figured why not. Had to keep this. This is the entire set of the Super Mario Bros. Super Show on DVD and uh, it's in really good condition. Big fan of Firefly, really great show. If you've never watched it, I highly recommend it and it's really nice to have the complete series on DVD. And this is season one of He-Man Master of the Universe. I grew up with this cartoon. It has the first 33 episodes from season one on uh, six different DVDs, so that's pretty awesome. I may try to track down the rest of the set at some point. And again, like I said, I decided to keep these Goosebumps books because I'm gonna try to uh, co complete a full set of Goosebumps books. And then I also decided to keep this Buffy the Vampire Slayer comic because I'm a new fan of Buffy the Vampire Slayer. I'm not through the whole show yet, but I started watching it recently and it is quite good, I have to admit. All right, so next up is a, a medium, small to medium-ish game lot that I got from my usual contact that usually hits me up every month or two with a box full of games and sells them to me for a fantastic price. Now again, a lot of the stuff in this lot I'm not gonna be keeping because they're duplicates or just games I'm not interested in, so they're put up in a closet. I didn't feel like digging them out, I know. Lazy, I'm sorry but I just didn't feel like digging them out. So I'm gonna show you a picture of everything in the lot, and then I'll show you what I did keep out of the lot. So let's get into it. All right, so here's what we got in this lot. We got Super Smash Bros. Melee, Soul Calibur 2, 007 Nightfire, Rat Attack, Dinosaur King, Casper, Superman Shadow of Apocalypse, IndyCar Series, and Mobile Light Force 2. Next up, we've got for the Wii and Wii U, we've got Mario Kart Wii, Zelda Twilight Princess, Kokoto Magic Circus, King of Clubs, Fragile Dreams, Marble Mania, Gunblade EX Arcade Hits LA Machine Gun, Wii Sports, Family Game Night, Upuna, DuckTales Remastered, Mario Kart 8, three Wii Sports, and one some kind of redneck farm animal driving game. I don't know what the hell that is. Next up, we've got Kirby's Epic Yarn, New Super Mario Bros. Wii, Tiger Woods PGA Golf 2010. Then we've got another copy of Wii Sports, Wii Sports Resort, Oni Chimbara, I'm sure I butchered that, Little League World Series Baseball, We Love Golf, Blast Works, and Boom Blocks. Next up, we got The Warriors, Odd World, Strangers, Wrath, Star Wars The Complete Saga, Rapala Fishing Frenzy, the Call of Duty Combo Pack, which includes Black Ops and Black Ops 2, Vanquish, Dance Dance Revolution 2 Universe, Grand Theft Auto 5, Sonic's Ultimate Genesis Collection, Dirt 2, Hulk, Left 4 Dead 2, Call of Duty Black Ops 2, Deus Ex Human Revolution, Harry Potter Years 5 to 7, The Amazing Spider-Man, Call of Duty Modern Warfare Trilogy, which includes all three, 
Terraria, iNinja, and Whiplash. And then we got some loose games. We got Odd World, Yu-Gi-Oh, Ridge Racer, Wild Nine, Thrillville, another Yu-Gi-Oh game, Pokemon Coliseum, Pokemon XD, Baja Edge of Control, NASCAR 15, and Rocksmith Remastered. So all in all, it was a pretty good game lot, and the price that I paid for it was well below retail value, so I am very happy with it. Now, I didn't keep very many games out of the lot. I only kept DuckTales Remastered for the Wii U, Muramasa the Demon Blade, which I've heard is an awesome game, Hasbro Family Game Night, and I upgraded my copy of Wii Sports to, from the copy in the sleeve to this copy in a regular case because I thought that was pretty cool. So I also picked up a couple of CRTs and another Holy Grail item in June. I picked up two CRTs with VCR combos built into them. One of them the VCR doesn't work but the other one it does so I have at least the means of playing my VHS tapes which is awesome and retro games look great on these TVs. But the Holy Grail item, and I'm going to show you some B-roll of all this stuff while I'm talking about it. The Holy Grail item is the Sony Trinitron PVM. I saw this pop up on the Facebook Marketplace for 75 bucks, and these things go for two to four hundred dollars on eBay used. And this thing had been in storage for years. He only used it a couple of times, so it's in practically new condition. These things are incredibly hard to find, and retro games look amazing on these TVs. So I was very, very, very happy to find that and add that to the TV collection. And it's actually pretty fun to play games on. You just gotta sit really damn close to the TV. So there you have it, folks. Those are my pickups for the month of June 2020. Let me know in the comments down below if you have any questions about anything that you saw in today's video, or if you have any comments about any of the games that you saw in today's video. Also, let me know in the comments down below what all you picked up in the month of June. If you enjoyed the video, hit the like button. If you're new here, subscribe so you can join the Retro Wolf family. And until next time, folks, keep playing games and having a good time, and I'll see you all in the next video. Later.